Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I thought I'd post a quick little video for you today. Um, I've come here to do some CNC machining. I usually do more manual machining these days, but anyway, I've got a job for a customer to do. And um, lo and behold, I've turned the mill on and it's uh, the memory has dropped its guts. So it's uh, lost its absolute encoder values for the X axis and Y axis. Now, the trouble is, is the memory battery in the drivers. Now, a while ago, I saw this come up on the forum on Facebook and uh, the guy posted a picture uh, what it, where the batteries are. And of course, that's not the case with my machine. So I went hunting. I knew it had to be a battery problem and I found it. So I want to share this video with you in case you have the same problem. All right, so let's go around the back and take a look. Now, I've got you in, in the back of my machine cabinet here. Now, there's not a lot of room. I'm a big bloke and I'm struggling fitting in here and I can't open the doors the whole way. But if we take a look over here at my uh, servo driver, which is an Ethernet connected one, if we come down the bottom here, there's the culprit right there. So we pluck him off. And there's that little red bastard hiding in there. That battery. Now, I've looked everywhere today, I've rung a lot of suppliers, it's a Saturday here in Melbourne, Australia, and I can't get one of these batteries come hella high water. So what I've done, I've bought a similar size voltage, a little bit higher milliamps, and I've done this modification here. Now it's only temporary, but I will purchase the proper ones. So I'll take it back over the bench and I'll show you the problem. Now I'm trying to do this with one hand because I don't have a tripod for the iPhone, but you can see here the old battery, if I touch it there, is literally drained out. So 0 0.05 or 0 0.06 of a volt. And obviously that's why I'm having the problem I'm having here today. So this last battery I pulled out is the Z-axis battery. And I've got my voltmeter probes on there. And you can see here we're getting roughly, you know, the required voltage that we need. So unfortunately for me, it was just the, well, well not unfortunately, fortunately, um, it was the X and Y axes and not the Z. Now had the Z had dropped its memory, uh, that's a whole nother heartache because you'd have to re realign the tool changer and set all those values. So thank God that didn't go. So I've tinned this wire here and I've tinned the positive wire here. I've also put my heat shrink on and what I'll do now, I'll solder that to the positive terminal. So I've soldered the wires on here now and uh, see I've done a little return there. It's not the best, but it'll do um, to keep the wires as long as I can get. I now put this heat shrink over it and uh, shrink wrap it. I've got all three batteries back on here now for the X, Y and Z. Um, it's not my proudest work or <laughs> my best work, but it'll get me out of trouble, all right? And I will reorder those proper batteries that go up under here on these drivers. So let's see if the machine actually moves around now. Well, I'm back guys. I've got inside for about three hours, had some dinner, refreshed up and uh, come back into my little two car garage and turn on the rotary phase converter, fired up the song and good news, it's uh, all bells and whistles, it's all going again. Uh, thank God for that. It's uh, a bit scary, you know, when the controller comes up and says it's lost its uh, absolute positioning. So anyway, I'll take you around and give you a look. I brought you up to my alarm page and I'll show you some of the alarms I was getting when I turned it on today. So it all started here um, with my absolute data loss, um, Y axis, X axis, and uh, Z axis. That's just an over, uh, over soft limit. So these were the two that I had to clear today. Um, this absolute data loss, all right? So anyway, uh, good news. You've got to go through a bit of a process to get it all set back up again. And look, it, without telling a lie, it did take me a while um, because you're reading from instructions off uh, that the user group have put up, uh, Mr. Chen from Seoul put up there, which is good. And uh, look, they're thorough, but um, when you're a bit of a Gumby like me, it can take a little bit of time. Let's take you in here. I'll just show you it all working again. So you can see now, I've can jog in my x-axis, my y-axis, my z, 
and of course I can zero return all of them now which is a good thing now I do have an x-axis ball screw problem I've had it since new it's a bit noisy and there we have it they're all homed and you can see here now my machine is all zero 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 uh, so I'm happy with that and uh, when I was setting it all up too I set my relative to zero as well and I'll tell you why I did that so I had to take the covers off here uh, I had to find where the b Y ball screw was and have my finger in there real gently and just manually jog it as close as I could get to the bearing bracket and uh, of course come off it because you don't want to crash it and that's when I did my Y reset and I've got my full travels now back again so about 400 in X uh, three uh, sorry what is it 250 in Y I think and I'll take you around the side of the machine I rode it up here a while ago yeah so I'm, I'm actually getting 400 now for some reason and probably uh, 250 just a bit over 250 and that's my Z well, that's all I've got for you tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, it's not a big video. All I want to do was share my experience with you. And now listen, if you've got an LNC controller like mine, do yourself a favor, change your batteries. Now, don't change the batteries with the machine turned off. The machine has to be turned on when you change the batteries, all right? Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck with your Sile machine and if you've got an LNC controller. Cheers. Bye-bye.